Howdy folks, my name's Christian and welcome to Bullish on Farming. Today we're taking a look at our forest raised pigs again. Today's Thursday, June 16th. And uh, well, we moved these girls into this section about four days ago. And as you can see, there's still some green cover. It wasn't too wet when we moved them in here, so they didn't root as much. After a rain, you'll see uh, the pigs really start rooting as the ground's softer and more malleable really like to get the roof of their noses under that soil and do some work. Living out the pigness of the pig as Joel Salatin calls it. And yeah, so what are we feeding our pigs? Well, we're feeding them hog grower um, and fermented scratch grain, which is corn, barley, and soy oil. And that fermented grain, it's not in their tub yet. I put it on top because it's wet. I still have to go get it. Uh, is partially digested through the fermenting process, which is great for the pigs because they're monogastric. They've got one stomach. <laughs> As you can see, the big girls eat first. Those three are actually two weeks older than the, the rest, so they're highest on the pecking order. For those of you who don't know, uh, size means everything in the animal kingdom. And in our hog grower, um, we got organic corn, soybean meal, whole peas, barley, wheat, and hog premix. So these are organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised, forest-raised pigs. And um, folks, there's just nothing like it. When your pigs live like this, the meat is just a world of a difference of what you're buying in store, right? In store, and I don't want to, you know, criticize other people's meat and what they produce, but it's just a world of a difference. If you haven't tried forest raised pork, you gotta try it. Um, and so, what do we got for water? Let's take a walk on over. It's a 65 gallon stock tub. And I drill a hole in the side, put in a grower nipple, and I hike it up on a tire with a strap on a tree. Um, that keeps it nice and stays put right there. And I got it hiked up because the uh, the size of the pigs right now, that's perfect for them to um, be at that 45 degree angle. You don't want your pigs looking down and twisting their, their neck to uh, drink water, folks. You want to make it easy for them, right? Our inner fencing is that two strand, that classic Joel Salatin style, six inches off the ground for the first wire, 12 inches for the second one. And when they're younger piglets, you know, some people like to drop that first wire a bit. Depends on what your comfort level is and how trained your pigs are, right? Because, uh, you know, your, your pigs got to be wire trained. And I'm not talking about half wire trained. I'm talking about train trained. That's the only way this stuff's going to work out for you. And, uh, well, stress free at least. And so what do we do? We did a little bit of landscaping. We got a lot of stones in and around this area. And so we just place them underneath the first wire to give a little bit of that, uh, you know, close that gap between that first wire and the ground. And it also kind of looks pretty too. It's an intentional landscaping, let's call it. <laughs> Nothing fancy, it takes some extra time. It's an extra addition. You don't need to do it, but yeah, well, it just gave us some peace of mind. And this pig paddock's gonna be here for a while, right? So. We just set it up how we wanted to. And as you can see on the outside, we got a three strand. Not completely necessary, but I do sleep well at night when I first put the piglets out, knowing that that third wire will deter any new predators who might be smelling fresh pork on the farm. And yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the door that we're working with. E, like as I mentioned before we these feeders and that waterer they travel with the group that's not set up in each paddock right we keep it simple so how do they get from paddock to paddock well it's nothing more special than framing up a couple T posts and then on the inside sizing out the gap with a rebar so that you can just slide that skid on in and it easily just stands as a door. Now the reason why you use wood and not electric wire is because when you move pigs, 
they're very intelligent, okay? If they've got zapped in that area before and you move the wire, they won't be so convinced that they can walk through it. You make your life way easier if you have a physical barrier that they're able to come and rub up against and uh, condition themselves into knowing that it doesn't shock them. That way when you move it, they're way easier to walk through it. Take a look at these girls. Live in the life, baby. And they're growing well. I've been growing pigs for three years, different farmers. Um, these are, our, I mentioned before, I'll say it again. We're running Heritage Berkshire with Berkshire Tamworth Cross. And the, the crosses would be the lighter pigs. You do have a black gilt out here who's also a Berkshire Tamworth Cross. Um, and yeah, I just brought out their feed. So they're having first servings this morning. That spot, look at that cute little spotty. And we love our pigs here, folks. You know, we honor their life as animals and we recognize the circle of life and life cycle that has brought us here today and as a population got us this far. But the biggest thing, for me at least, and you know, the farm I'm on, they're very much on that same philosophy, is honoring the life of the animal. Hey, playing with my feedback. <laughs> you can see folks, they're very much like dogs. Their, their tags well, uh, tails wag when they're happy and they play with things, they're curious, they run around and they wrestle and, well, that's what a good pig should be doing. And so, yeah, let's take a quick trip down to the first paddock because that would be about 30 days ago now. And that'll show you some of the regrowth we've had after 30 days. So this will be the next paddock they're walking in. And you can see it's absolutely lush. Um, halfway through June and nothing's touched this. So it's been waiting for the pigs, nice and juicy. And so you could see the magical pig forest we got going on here. All right, first paddock. Now I will say that this first paddock is the wettest paddock we have. So when it pours, it gets waterlogged and everything has to dry out really before sprouts coming up. But as you can see, we got some green and over coming in here. This has been 30 days. It's got another 20 days yet before the pigs are gonna be in here. You think this thing's gonna be grown out? I do. Um, folks, you got to be given the right rest time for your land. Pigs have a very high impact. And if you're not resting your land properly, you're not giving it a chance to bounce back to be ready for them the next time they come. Anyways, I'll show you this paddock in another video, probably right before they move in it. And we'll see how this one has grown in. But I think I'll uh, keep it quick there cap it off actually you know what I'll show you this this is a training pen okay that I've created within their first paddock so you turn the piglets out loose in here and they got the training wires with a page wire fence on the outside I've done it before and it works but I didn't use piglets what I didn't think of was what we got the, the piglets in here at four weeks those holes in the page wire are a little too big so that's when we got two pigs dart out into the forest. They came back, didn't lose any piglets this year, never lost a pig. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, as you can see on the outside there, I got skids for a physical barrier. All I'm gonna do is line that skids all along this page wire fence here. And so when it comes loading time for the pigs, send to the processor, we move them right into here. We push them right down. Stock trailer backs up right at that gate swung open using pig boards push them right in easy peasy lemon squeezy and that's also the good thing about handling your pigs daily bringing your feed out to them in their paddock spending some time with them so that they get familiarized with you and comfortable so that when you have to move them and get them off to the processor they're not fighting you or running away okay you don't want spooked animals when you're handling them folks that's the value of handling your animals daily, spending time with them. They learn to 
uh, be calm around you and trust you. And uh, well, when that happens, it makes your life way easier when you got to work with them. All right, guys, well, I'll cap that one off here. And uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one.